Hi guys, today we're going to do civil forfeiture and on. So basically, um, the on case deals with the Civil Forfeiture Act. The Civil Forfeiture Act allows state agents to possess the land on behalf of the state if they have reasonable grounds to believe that a person has bought the, bought the lands with the proceeds of crime or is using the land in the commission of crime. So in this case, a grog would probably count. So basically how I like to think of this is the state possessing the land is kind of like turning a fee simple that a person once had into a life estate. Uh, the person who once had a fee simple could do whatever they wanted with the land. Once the person was, once the land was seized under the Civil Forfeiture Act, like a life estate, the person can still live on the land, and like a life estate, they cannot cause waste to the land. In addition, if the state finds the person guilty of uh, committing crimes on the land or buying the land with proceeds of crime, there's a gift over to the state, and the state then retains fee simple of the land. So again, in an exam, don't say it's a life estate, it really isn't, but the way we can think about it, just um, conceptually, is it kind of is like one. It's like a conditional life estate in a way. But uh, let's move on to the case, and it'll become a lot clearer as to how this manifests itself. So. Basically, on as I said, has a grow up on her land. We don't know if she knows about this or not, but we do know that her nephew gets arrested on the land. The police see the grow up, charge the nephew, and take the land into state possession. Ergo, turning her fee simple into what would kind of be considered similar to a life estate. So then the director of civil forfeiture goes to court and says, here's an order, judge. I want you to sign this. And this order has several different paragraphs. Three of the paragraphs the judge doesn't agree with. Paragraph 8 and 9 deal with paragraph 7. So paragraph 8 basically says if the person doesn't comply with paragraph 7, they can apply to the court, the uh, director can apply to the court for certain remedies. And number paragraph number 9 talks about um, that the director of civil forfeiture is allowed to get written um, request written confirmation that all of the uh, requests in seven are being met. But really, the really important paragraph that gets brought up to the Supreme, or the BC Court of Appeal, is paragraph seven and its subsections. So as talked about in class, we kind of have four main subsections that the court looks at. So we'll just go through this. Hopefully when the video renders, this will become a lot clearer, but I'll kind of read it out for you guys in addition. Um, so basically the first uh, subsection, subsection A, says uh, Miss On must maintain the property to a level uh, of good state of repair and take all the steps to prevent waste. So the court looks at this and says, okay, there's two things that are going to happen, possibly. Um, number one, if she thinks she's going to retain the land, if she knows she didn't do anything wrong, she knows she's going to get fee simple in the land, and then she has really, there's, she just has the incentive to keep the land, or to upkeep the land, because she's going to own it in perpetuity. Then the, case, then the court says, well, if she knows she's committed crimes on the land and knows she's going to lose the land, then she kind of has an incentive or a disincentive to um, upkeep the land. But the court also looks at this and says, well, we don't like to give orders of personal servitude. And what this means is the court doesn't like to force people to do something for, really, for no incentive. Because essentially, if she knows she's going to lose the land, she has no incentive to continue to benefit the land. So what the court says is, okay, we don't want to give her positive things she has to do. So for example, we don't have, want to have to make her do repairs. We just don't want her to ruin the land. So they kind of frame it in a way of an injunction. They say, all right, turn paragraph A into the following. The land has to be maintained to the same level as it was when the state repossessed it. So basically what this is saying is don't cause waste on the land in very um, colloquial terms. So the court says this is fine because it doesn't um, force someone to do an order of personal servitude in the sense it doesn't force someone to do something for no benefit, it just tells them not to do something. And in addition, it's very clear. It says you have to maintain it to the same level that it was when the state took it away. It's clear as to what the state expects of Miss On, and also what Miss On has to do to reach that um, level. Number two, or subparagraph B, it says that we have to comply with the bylaws. So the court looks at this and says, again, we don't want to make her do 
positive things. We don't want to make her have to do things. Again, I'm using the positive in the way that uh, Professor Backen does, like positive as in like a sword, she has to do this, not positive as that she wants to do them. Um, so we don't want to make her do positive things like repair the place if it wasn't already to bylaw standards. But they said, you know, we want you to keep it at a level which if you were originally at the bylaw standards, we want you to keep meeting the bylaw standards and not let the place go into waste. All right, number C, pay all property taxes. The Court of Appeal looks at this and says, that's fine. Um, if you're a life tenant, you have to pay property taxes anyway. So there really isn't any reason why we can't have this order. So they give that a check mark and say, don't worry about that, that's fine. The last one, the court says, is ensure property is not used for any illegal means. They say, okay, this is tricky. Because Miss On, we can give her an injunction to prevent her from doing illegal things on the land. That's okay. But we can't prevent her from preventing others from doing things on the land. So imagine Miss On in her, um, you know, there's a proceeding for civil forfeiture going on. She's living as a life tenant and someone comes on the land and starts graffitiing it. All right? Well, technically, that would be an illegal act done on the land. But the court says, well, that's not Mrs. On's fault. That's some um, hooligan's fault uh, who ran onto the land and did something. So we can injunct Mrs. On to, do, to not do anything illegal and probably her relatives, but we can't injunct other people from going on the land and doing things. If you have any questions, let me know, but essentially that's the crux of civil forfeiture and on.